former year to date is SVB Financial. Don't you want? This company's a merchant bank with a deposit base that Wall Street had been mistakenly concerned about. I think the fears were not justified. It's a very compelling situation. This morning, we witnessed the second largest bank failure in American history, which naturally created a wave of fear as the day went on. Honestly, how is he always wrong about everything? How can anyone take him seriously at this point? But he is right about one thing, and he is right about the fear. And it's because people are scared. We have just witnessed three bank failures in the last 72 hours, and this has led us to the largest bailout since the great financial crisis of 2008. So I wanna help ease people's minds and help people understand what is happening with the recently introduced government bailout and what it means for banks across the United States and ultimately, is your money safe? This all starts because three major US banks have failed across the United States. Silvergate, Signature Bank, and Silicon Valley Bank. And we have to begin by explaining what happened to these banks and why they failed in the first place. Then we can take a look at the new government policy that is being put in place in the next few days and how it will change the banking industry as well as covering the new bailouts. The bank failure. Silvergate and Signature Bank were well known for their work in the crypto market space as well as crypto projects, while Silicon Valley Bank is known for backing big tech startups. This was the bank that so many tech companies started with, as well as being much larger than the other two banks, even at one point backing 44% of venture-funded tech startups. So Silicon Valley Bank took their money and they invested primarily in bonds, and this is what led to their downfall. They put a big chunk away for the three to four year bonds at an interest rate of 1.79%. They were basically making the bet that their interest rates would stay the same and they would profit once their bonds hit maturity. But since interest rates have been on record rate increases, new bonds have come out making the bonds that SVB was holding significantly less value on the second hand bond market. Now, this normally isn't a huge problem, but the problem comes as the money is tied up in these bonds isn't liquid, meaning that if they had to sell their bond portfolio, Silicon Valley Bank would take huge losses and their portfolio would be less than the value of those deposits made by customers. Well, when customers got wind that the bank would potentially have insolvency issues, people were scared into drawing out their deposits. They didn't have enough money to cover these deposits, so they began selling their investments at a loss. This was a spiral effect as many people heard about their insolvency issues and they too began pulling their money out of the bank, which led to a bank run of Silicon Valley Bank. And it was so bad, at one point police were called in the bank and it eventually got bad enough that the bank was forced to shut down and was taken over by the FDIC. Now, unlike other articles that first came out when the bank said that it was facing insolvency issues, meaning they had no more money to give, these banks actually had a liquidity issue where they couldn't get the money as quickly as they needed to give it to customers. And Silicon Valley Bank focused on businesses with accounts that were much larger than most other banks. So the $25,000 of FDI insurance didn't cover much. In fact, almost 93% of the funds of Silicon Valley Bank were unprotected. So this is at the point where we see the government doing things that we haven't seen before. So what's supposed to happen when a bank fails normally? Well, the Federal Reserve comes in shuts down the bank, they get the depositors information, and then they pay $250,000 per account. And the depositors will basically receive a check from the FDIC or Fed's Insurance Claims Department. All this while the FDIC starts selling the bank's assets to eventually go back to those depositors. So this process can be very quick, and which it is the case here, but it also can take a pretty long time as well. And essentially, this will let depositors get the most, if not all of their money back at a decent time. But here's where things start to get unique. Janet Yellen first said that there was no government bailouts on the table for SVB. But then the Federal Reserve had an emergency meeting to see what could be done about the situation. Their biggest concern is people are losing trust in the banking system and everyone is going to become running back to the bank to pull out all their money at once, which could potentially lead to the world's greatest economic collapse. And former Treasury Secretary Larry Summers was quick to point out that if nothing is done right away and the Federal Reserve messes this up, this could spell bad news for everyone. Well, the Federal Reserve was quick to act, and in a statement from the Treasury Department on Sunday night said that depositors would have access to their funds come Monday morning, not just the $250,000, but all of their money. They also went on to say that no losses associated with the resolution of Silicon Valley Bank will be borne to the taxpayer. So naturally, this made people ask a lot of questions like, how is this going to work and how is the taxpayer not going to be paying anything related to the losses of Silicon Valley Bank? 
Well, it begins with the FDIC Insurance Fund. The FDI Insurance Fund is a large fund that all banks pay into to basically provide insurance if a bank were to fail. So the FDIC will use this money to pay for any losses they are able to get back by selling assets of the bank. The last time this fund was needed was after 2008 and things got so bad that they depleted the fund to zero dollars. So this means that Silicon Valley assets will be liquidated and the Federal Reserve will step in and pay the difference from the insurance fund they have been saving up for times just like this. Remember, this bank wasn't super poorly mismanaged, so the money is still there. It's just locked away in assets that are performing poorly right now. And people consider this a solution where no one is actually harmed. So this sounds like a bailout from the Fed, but in reality, they are just pulling from a savings account that was built for this very purpose. But what's interesting is what the Federal Reserve said for the other banks. They said they will make additional funding available to eligible depository institutions to help assure that banks will have the ability to meet the needs of their depositors. So that the government just give banks an access to unlimited amount of cash. To make an answer short, yes, yes they did. But let me explain why this makes sense. See, the program created is called the Bank Term Funding Program. This program is designed to help banks so they don't go through the same problems as SVB. And yes, SVB problems are put on by themselves by possibly putting their assets into just one or just a couple of assets and not diversifying enough. But at the end of the day, they had a liquidity issue where they couldn't fulfill their customers' requests to get their money out because they would have to start selling their investments for big losses. So the bank term funding program is put in place to offer loans up to one year to lenders that pledge collateral including U.S. Treasuries and other qualifying assets. This would allow banks to fulfill their customers' withdrawals without having to take large losses right away on their investments. So this is how the government is giving banks access to unlimited amount of money if they need it in case people want to withdraw all their money from the bank. I think everyone knew that if something wasn't done right away, these small banks would lose the confidence of the customers and risk more bank runs. So now that catches us up to what is happening now. Well, bank stocks are taking a massive hit as some stocks are down a whopping 60%, such as First Republic Bank. So why is this happening if banks are being bailed out and there's an unlimited supply of money for them in case of a worst case scenario? It all comes down to psychology and the emotions behind what people do with their money. People are realizing that some banks are looking relatively weak and they are afraid that Silicon Valley collapse could happen to their bank too. Just looking at CNN's business fear indicator, just a week ago they had a neutral outlook and just a month ago they had a market greedy outlook, meaning that there was very little fear in the market. But moving on to today, the market is bouncing between fear and even extreme fear. Even the KBW bank index, which measures how the banks are performing in the stock market, was down 12% yesterday. President Biden even made a speech to say that the banking industry was safe and for investors not to be worried. But investors are sure to remember the 2008 financial crisis when 465 banks failed within just four years. But even during this time, regulators and banking officials were quick to insist that everything was just fine. That's because they need people to think that everything is safe. And now I'm not saying it is not safe, but I'm not saying it's safe either. But if everyone is scared of the bank and they pull their money out and stuff it under the mattress, then the US would have a complete economic meltdown. So the stakes are high for banks as well as for the economy. So this will surely bring in more regulation for the banks. But something that is very interesting about the regulation was the CEO of Silicon Valley Bank was lobbying for less regulation in the wake of 2000, saying his bank wasn't systemic to the US economy. But now when the bank fails, it becomes a systemic risk. Very interesting. People in favor of the Fed's actions will say that this isn't a bailout. They are merely making the depositors whole again. And because it only applies to depositors, shareholders and executives will get nothing. But they were caught selling their stocks before the collapse. Shocker. But anyway, what does this mean for us? Just the regular people and not institutions. To me, it's concerning how hard it's being pushed that the small banks are actually safe. And people don't think they're super safe as investors were quick to pull out their money during this collapse. In my last video, I covered the 10 worst banks that could lead to a similar situation like SVB, so I would consider watching that one. But as a general rule of thumb, in high interest rate time periods, the bigger banks are going to be safer because they can handle diminished margins that the smaller banks can just not handle during times of high interest rates. So I'm sure the rich will be moving their money into the big banks, so I don't know, maybe you should consider it for yourself. If you found this video helpful, please, please like it. And if you're considering investing in the stock market, please use my link below for Webull. You can get some free stocks that way. It helps me out a lot because I don't get paid for this. So please like the video and if you can subscribe, 
that would be great for me and I'll catch you in another update or the next one.